Thanks Rosetta Stone for sponsoring this video. On today's video, get ready for a true Japan adventure. Today I'm going to share with you everything I eat in Japan. Things are very different over there. Some of the stuff might be familiar and others you might never seen before. And everything starts off with the most important meal of the day, breakfast. It has arrived everybody, Omo rice. Mm. Wow. If you've never had omo rice before, let me explain. It's a soft omelette that it's not cooked all the way through. Inside of it there's a very flavorful rice, usually fried rice and it's served with demi glaze sauce. It is delicious. Now for transportation in Japan, millions of people use the bullet train. That's crazy. <laughs> wow. Yeah, <laughs> they are super fast. But my next destination was Shibuya, which was not that far. So I went by subway train and that was an interesting experience. We're trying to take the train. It's not as easy as you might think because everything is Japanese. How in the world are you supposed to know where to go? Insert ticket. Insert ticket. You can also pay with Google Pay. You can also pay with Google Pay. Google Pay. Let's try a different one. Oh, I go? I probably pay like 10 times. But if you're thinking getting in was the only issue, no, 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 Papa. <laughs> There's more. So I think I'm going in this direction, or maybe this direction, or the other direction. I have no idea. There's another one on the other side. There's another one on the other side. There's another one on the other side. You're not gonna film the other side? There's another one on the other side. After this awesome subway trip, I finally arrived at Shibuya Crossing. They say it is about 3,000 people crossing every time. And it also dates back to the 19th century. So yeah, millions of people have crossed there and I thought it was just awesome. That's a lot of people. <laughs> We're gonna do a quick, big stop in a vending machine. Ice cocoa. Chocolate milk. Right about that time right there, I was getting a little bit hungry and I got to try something very popular. It's called takoyaki. If you've never had this before, let me explain. First, they add a very light batter and they put a piece of octopus in there. Sprinkle with a little bit of vegetables and then they add more batter. Once done, they add a good amount of barbecue sauce followed by mayo. And to finish it off, bonito flakes right on top. It's Japanese street food at its best. Oh, arigato. First time having takoyaki. Let's see. Mmm, very good. That was pretty good, everybody. It's very, very soft. A lot softer than I expected it to be. The inside is gooey, but the outside has a little bit of a crust. I mean, it's delicious. It's the perfect street food. Let's see what else we can find here in Tokyo. So we found a ramen shop place. We have no idea how to order. No clue. I'm a little nervous, not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm doing, everybody. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and order... Let's do soy sauce. Dry fish flakes. How do you pay? And how do you pay? How do you click to pay? Please insert large bill. <laughs> yeah, you can make fun of me as much as you want. The ordering process was not easy, everybody, but finally, the ramen arrived. Wow, look at this ramen. Looks like it was worth it. So this is the one that my lovely wife ordered. It has some type of anchovy as well. And here is the one that I ordered. It's with soy sauce base, pork. We got an egg. Very nice. The anchovy one. Oh yeah, very fishy. Ooh, that's how you taste. A lot of umami, very delicious. That was tonkatsu ramen, it was rich. Every time you slurp the broth and you eat the noodles, it feels quite fatty. It is full of flavor on every bite though. But since there was a lot of anchovy on that broth, it was quite fishy. Let me be very clear, it was very good, tasty, and awesome amazing ramen. The soy-based ramen, on the other hand, was super light. High umami flavor along with a tangy taste. Both of these ramens were absolutely delicious. So the ramen was delicious, everybody. I don't know if you can see behind me. The line goes crazy. It's a pretty long line, but it was delicious. It was worth it. Yeah, it was awesome trying to figure things out. And if you're careful, you are able to figure it out. It just might piss off a little bit of people on the line, but 
it's fine. So we're about to head to our next destination and I just wished I spoke Japanese. But don't worry, thanks to Rosetta Stone, I'm coming back here. And when I do, I'm gonna know Japanese as good as I know English. And I'm gonna be ordering Wario everywhere. You see, Rosetta Stone has a dynamic immersion approach. It provides a unique, engaging learning experience that helps you learn language faster and retain more. So you don't memorize, you actually learn through pictures, audio form, and interactive activities. And I know I need to work on my pronunciation, but Rosetta Stone's pronunciation engine helps learners nail their accent every time. And the awesome thing, lessons are as short as 10 minutes, so they can fit my schedule, and they have an app that allows me to take it everywhere. So if you are ready to learn a new language, all the information will be on the link on the description down below. Check the link on the description down below for your special discount. But right now, I need to find myself a Wagyu. My good friend is waiting for me, and I don't want to disappoint him. So let's try to find this Wagyu right now. After a lot of research, we found a meat shop. Now, at this point, I have been buying all of my food ready to eat. But as you know, I love to cook, and I was on a hunt to find some Wagyu so I can cook it myself. Okay, we found it. Wagyu beef everywhere. So we're gonna go ahead and get this one right here. It's like a great marbling. Uh, this, how much? If you don't see this, that means it's not real Kobe beef. Can you please put with ice? How do you got the... <laughs> See, I really wish I knew how to speak Japanese right now. Let's go ahead and buy some more. Why not? It's so inexpensive, everybody. See that? The fact that this is less than a hundred bucks is absolutely mind-blowing to me. You couldn't buy this one for less than $200 in the US. When you go to the source, it is cheaper, but what surprised me was this. Oh my God, check this out, everybody. These eggs are more expensive than the Wagyu. Why? So peanut butter costs as much as Wagyu. Isn't that crazy? Okay, we got the ingredients. Now, let's head over there. Hello, Guga. Oh my God, yes, <laughs> we made it. Let's go. <laughs> this is my friend Bayashi. You have over 65 million followers. That's a lot. Huge. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you most likely seen a bunch of his video online. And like me, he likes to experiment. I have a lot of Wagyu here. Oh. So we can try some experiments. Sounds good? Yeah, sounds good. This is the best one. I mean, take a look at this marbling, everybody. This is not something you see every day. Cooking with him was awesome, but whenever you're making a TikTok video, it's not the same thing as eating a real meal. So we had to go outside and eat. So we just finished a video with my good friend Bayashi, and uh, we're hungry. You hungry? Yes, I'm hungry. Yeah, I'm hungry too. But we came to this awesome restaurant where you can catch your own fish. Are you a good fisherman? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, good. I, I'm okay. <laughs> We're gonna catch the freshest sushi ever. Whoa. Let's go. Whoa. Catch fish like the way we do it in Miami, baby. Catching like there's no tomorrow, everybody. Let's go. <laughs> you gotta eat what you catch. Let me know if you agree. Or are you a catch and release kind of guy? Well, I'm not. So they prepared the fish several different ways for us. We had it fried, of course, sashimi style, which was raw. Are you ready to eat? Yes, let's go. Now, honestly, the fresh fish was just amazing. We had such a great experience in this restaurant and it was so much fun to catch dinner and have them prepare it right there for us. I mean, this restaurant was literally a blast, but we're not done yet. Later that day, it was dinner time and what's next is insane. This is called a molecular restaurant. It's a Michelin star restaurant that serves very fancy stuff. Just so you know, the menu comes in a CD for you. And to hold your utensils, they give you a bolt and nut. The very first dish was this. It's a caviar donut. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Now the taste was sweet and savory at the same time. Mm. Let's appreciate the creativity here. That's what I gotta say about that. Next up was crab taco, made with king crab and mustard seed pearls. That was way better, quite delicious. Then they served us this soup, which was lobster bisque. Quite fancy as you can see, but it had other elements which was delicious. Now when you go to a restaurant like this, the show is as important as the food itself. So they keep you busy and thinking what's next. Take a look at this thing, cigar, but it's food. Let's think about this for a second. Would you want to eat a cigar? I don't know about that one, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> and then when they serve it to you, it really looks like a cigar. I mean, take a look at this. Now you're probably wondering, how did it taste, Guga? Well, 
Let's just say it tasted smoky. <laughs> Next up was what it looked like a chicken nugget, but it was actually lamb filled with sauce. And there was a very specific way of eating it. As soon as you take a bite, the sauce coats your entire mouth and it's pretty delicious. Dish after dish kept coming, but honestly, I was ready for some meat. That is when this arrived. Japanese A4 filet mignon. At this moment, I was so happy. However, as soon as they started serving, it got me quite concerned. They put a bunch of veggies on top of it, man. Come on, man, give me some beef, brother. I was like, hell no. So I took all the veggies out and enjoyed my steak. And let me tell you something, it was Marvelous. Right after it was dessert and it was quite interesting. This is called banana split. The dust you see is chocolate, strawberry, and vanilla ice cream. Yes, ice cream. And surprisingly, it was pretty awesome. As soon as you put the powder in your mouth, it becomes ice cream. I don't know how they do it, everybody, but it's some type of magic sorcery that I can't explain. Like I said, it's an experience when you're eating things like this. The final dish, I believe it was called the rocks. That's because inside of this cup, they put many different things. And a few of them are pop rocks. We all know what happens when you eat pop rocks. They pop in your mouth. It was fantastic. This restaurant was an amazing experience, everybody. And Japan was just fantastic. Everything I was able to do in just a short amount of time is why I wanna go back. Thank you, Rosetta Stones, for sponsoring this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this amazing experience I had in Japan. It was absolutely incredible, a trip I will never forget. If you did enjoy it, hit that thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below which one was your favorite part, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.